It's wonderful to see. It truly is. You know, I'd hate to go to a place where nobody said anything to anybody. Yeah. Nobody crossed an aisle. Yeah. Had any communication at all. I wouldn't want to be at a place like that. I'm glad we don't do that thing here. So. Amen. It's blessed to see the fellowship, the rejoicing. How many of y'all glad you're in the house of the Lord? Amen. 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 What a great blessing that is. God's so good to us. I get it. It's 2023. Oh, that. No, hey. The year has nothing to do with the way we behave and the way we interact. It was good yesterday to interact and to love on one another and care one for another. It's still good today to do the same thing. Matter of fact, if you read study your Bible, he's all about love. Love God, love your neighbor. And the more we get that down path, the blessedness starts to flow. And all God's people, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they and have done a bond of iniquity. There is none that doeth good. God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there was any that did understand, that did seek God. Every one of them has gone back. They are together all become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. They, them, they, them. That's not us. Have the workers of iniquity no knowledge, who eat up my people as they eat bread. They have not called upon God. There were they in great fear where no fear was. For God has scattered the bones of him that encampeth against thee. Thou hast put them to shame because God has despised them. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion when God bringeth back the captivity of his people. Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. Well, guess what? It's a great time for God's people to do what? Rejoice. Amen. Because we do have salvation. Yeah, what a great God we serve. Amen. Amen. You know what? Bring it on. Death. All that. Bring it on. Because we have victory over death and hell. We can thank God for that today. And what a great opportunity to us as God's people have to rejoice over. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, as we bow before you, as we come to the throne, thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for each and every one that is here. And if there's one here that doesn't know you, I pray they too can come and know you before it's everlasting too late. That will be done in Christ's name. Amen. 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 And good morning. Good morning. Boy, I tell you what, I, I was like him. I was listening to all that talking out there. It made me feel good to see everybody smiling and everything. Amen. And then I got to think about the church that I used to go to a long time ago. My tax man and I went to church together for over a year and didn't know that we was even there at the same church. <laughs> you ever heard of that? Yeah. Yeah. How could you do that? Mm. Well, it was your tax man. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what you you think you know the only way we called it was that he got lit. hey Will stand up back there in that corner do any of y'all know Will yeah. yeah that's what we were doing me and Melissa we was back there working in the sound booth and he never saw me and so when he went to do my taxes he looked at it and he said brother John you go really call the Baptist church I said yeah he said well I do too mm -hmm. I said well that's good I said I hadn't seen you I said, but next time you come in, go look in the sound booth and you'll see us. So guess what he did that next week? He found us in the sound booth. Amen. But I'll tell you what, it is good. You know, even those dinners we have back there, Pastor, it is so good to go back there and, and be with everybody and fellowship. Amen. You know, when you're family, you're family. Amen. And I feel like everybody here is family. Amen. So if y'all feel like family this morning, let's praise God. 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 Praise
of the world to me. My life, my joy, and my all. Amen. Sure enough, I get it, I get it. 
I know what holler. He came out of it. I even might know where the rock is that they flipped over to pull him out from underneath. No, sure enough. Sure enough. Sure enough. Yep. Anyhow. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, he can't say anything about it. I know his daddy. Sure. Don't let Danny. There you go. Uh, God's good, isn't he? All and all the time, God, God, God is good. good. What a great blessing. It's good to be in God's house. Yeah, sure. and, you know, how many of y'all enjoyed that rain this morning? Uh, oh, yeah. Sure enough, I, I tell you, rain on a metal roof is just something else. Amen, right there. It's the little things. God gives you little things day in and day out. Don't blow through it. Don't overlook it. Embrace it and thank God for it. Amen. It is the little things day in and day out. What God blesses us with. And shows us really who's in control. And what a great God we serve. Amen. The opportunity. What a great day. And so as we go to the Lord in prayer this morning. I do appreciate you being here. You know I picked on him. And I love you man. But if you will. Lead us in prayer this morning. All right. Our Father in heaven Lord. Lord we thank you for all the gifts in our lives. Sometimes we forget the small things. But Lord it's the small things where you show how much you truly love us. Oh, we thank you for this church. We thank you for helping us be a light in this dark, dark world. Yes. And Lord, we want you to continue to help us to be a light. We want to make everything about you and nothing about us. We want to lift up this offering for your glory and your kingdom and use it how you see fit. And also give Brother Shane the words to speak, but not just the words, the courage to speak the words, Lord, because it's getting worse and worse every day. <coughs> Lord, we thank you for what you did for us. Most importantly, we thank you for your son who died not just for yes. us, but for the world. Thank you, Lord. And if there's anybody here that does not know who your son is, yes. do not let him leave today without yes. knowing. Because yes. none of us have promised our next prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> So if y'all want to get with me after church, because somebody asked me about it, and I just wanted to make sure everybody knew if we had one. So, thank you. Amen. Everything's a work in progress. Amen. Amen. I look forward to eventually to getting this uh, platform redone and our sound system and all like that, but all comes in time. Kind of goes along with today's message. If you've got your Bibles with you, you would open your Bibles uh, to Matthew chapter number 9. Matthew chapter number 9. You see, I didn't start off here. Matter of fact, 
there was a lot of daylight between me and where I started and right here. And by the way, same thing about you. You didn't start off where you're at either. It's a progress or a process. And we need to progress in that process. Amen. But I want you to see this this morning. Look with me in Matthew chapter number 9. If you're with me this morning, say amen. Amen. Good to have you. Verse number 1. And he entered into his ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy. They ain't got a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Saw their faith. Saw their faith. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man of blasphemy. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. And he arose, and departed to his house. And when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you speak to the hearts here today. Have your one way in this message as only you can. If there's one that doesn't know you, they'll come to know you today before it's ever last too late. Thy will be done in Christ's name. Right. Amen. Amen. I, as a little boy, started walking rather early compared to some. And truthful, Brother Jack, maybe not as early as compared to some others. But I was pretty young. But walking is a great blessing that God's given to us. If you don't think that's the case, stop walking. And you're going to start thinking it a whole lot differently. Great opportunity that you can get up and move around the room without any hesitation or any restrictions or anything like that. Walking is a blessedness from God. I begin to ponder on this. In Mark chapter 2, and verse number 11 says, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into thy house. And immediately he arose and took up the bed and went forth before them all, and so much that they were all amazed. I remember uh, uh, our kids as they began to walk. Those little bitty fellas, you know, they're in there, they've been crawling all over the place, they're, they're here, they're there. Y'all know how it is, those little babies, you know, when they start crawling. They're crawling, they're pulling themselves up on things. And then finally, as they get themselves pulled up on things, there they go. And Amy hollers out, Hey, come in here and see. He's about ready to take the first step. When that happens, we drop everything and we run in there to see those little steps that they start to make. And wow, my boy's walking now. It's an amazing sight watching them walk. Don't y'all look strange at me. We all make a big hoopla over that. Amen. That's the physical walking, amen. What about somebody that gets saved? Yes. Yeah. And begins to start taking those first steps. Oh, amen. amen. Wow, what a sight. Yes. You look at this situation right here, Brother Alex. There's two parts right there. There is a physical hindrance, uh, hindrance that he is dealing with. But also... There is a spiritual aspect that God's dealing with. Right. He says, look, what is easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven him, or to get up and walk? Hey, it's both important. It's both unique. And by the way, listen to me very carefully. When he got up, it was a spiritual matter just as much as a physical matter. Amen. Amen. And in the process of that, 
I remember those first steps. Wow, what a deal. What a deal. But I also remember, Brother Alex, how important it is to walk. I remember in my early 30s, I was cutting some uh, uh, a tree up, and I was pulling with the one hand and had the chainsaw on my other hand, and I was twisting and turning and twisting and turning to where finally I threw my back out. Anybody ever throw their back out? And here I was, I'd be laying on my back. I, I was trying to get up, laying on my back, trying to get up. And... <laughs> ah! Huh? Yeah. We take for granted certain things. Right. <clears throat> Once I got on my feet, I actually preached for about two weeks for the John of the King. True story. Standing up, once I got on my feet, I was okay. But I had that cane to help me, and, and, and so I could get up on my feet and start to move again. The importance of walking. John 5, verse number 6 says, When Jesus saw him lie, and when that he had been uh, now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? Hey, do, do you want to walk? Do you want to get up on your feet? And the impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But why am coming a, another step down before me? Hey, everyone's out in front of me. I can't get there. I have nobody to help me. It reminds me about how frail life can be. And really how much we're dependent upon each other more than what we might want to acknowledge. It says, I'm having a problem. I'm, I'm an impotent man. I, I can't get down to the pool because nobody's here to help me. Jesus said unto him, Arise, take up thy bed, and walk. I've been here for years. Arise, take up thy bed, and walk. Now, some of you sitting here today might have got saved many years back, but you never walked with the Lord. God would say to you today, Arise, take up your bed, and walk. It's time to start stepping and saving right there. Amen. You see, God wants to utilize your abilities that he gives to you. What a miraculous thing to be able to walk. Amen. And immediately the man that was made whole and took up his bed and walked and on the same day was the Sabbath. Uh-oh. You realize sometimes our walking goes contrary to the things of man. Now this is God in the flesh. Jesus Christ has given him a command to take up his bed and to walk. And yet, they're going to get all upset about it because it's our Sabbath day. It don't coincide with what we want. It don't coincide with what we think. It don't coincide with our ideas and our thoughts. You know, there's a lot of things that go contrary between man and God. You know, I think back to my early years of walking. And I remember as I started to walk with the Lord, Miss Faye, they started saying things like Bible thumper. They started saying things like a fanatic. Oh, look at that fanatic. Huh? Now, I'm here to tell you that if I got up here this morning and I was decked out in the brightest orange coat that you've ever seen, <laughs> got Rocky tied up and down my tie, and I'm humming the tune to Rocky Top. Y'all sit here and say, that's okay. Huh? Now, don't y'all get me strange here. Hey, I like Tennessee. We want to be in Texas here to praise the Lord. Y'all can sit amen right there. Amen. But here's the deal. That's okay because that fits in with man's ideas. Matter of fact, some of you go home today and watch the NFL and you'll see these idiots up in the, sand, in the stands and they got their face all painted up. They got these all garb all over the body and everything. And you're saying, hey, that's normal. But let me start talking about the Lord. Let my walk be about God. And they look at me kind of strange and odd and say, oh, he's a Bible thumper. Amen. Hmm? But I got news for you. It's important for us to walk. Because how else is other mankind going to see who and what we really are unless we walk the walk? Yes, right. See, there's a difference 
Brother Tom, the way I walk and the way they walk. You want me to flip you chapter 3? There's a big difference in how I walk and how they walk. I think my little lapel mic's done with dead, I know. You got me on back here, Will? Hello? All right. Well, let's get this on up here. Y'all hear me all right? There we go. Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 17. If you're with me this morning, say amen. Look at what it says. Brother, that's us. Be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have for us, uh, <laughs> so as ye have us for an example. As in other words, follow those that walk the, the, the right way. I remember as a boy they used to say, well, why do they put this out in the front yard and everything? Well, to teach your kids how to walk. Well, the fact of the matter is, we ought to be teaching our kids how to walk. What well, to show them is an example out in front. Not like the world. Amen. Not like the world. Read on. For many walk of whom I've, uh, I've told you often, and now I've told you even weeping, that they're the enemies of the cross of Christ. Brother Alex, there's a lot of people walk differently than you and I walk. Amen. And it does break my heart. Because I see the damage it's doing to our kids. I, I see the harm that's coming to this world. I mean, hey, they're going contrary. They're to tell you such a situation or circumstance. Uh, they don't want to talk about God. They don't want to bring God up. None whatsoever. Then on the Monday night, national TV, football game, a guy drops dead on the field. Let's pray. Let's pray. Talk to God. If that's the only time you're talking to God, you might want to ask the question, is he really listening to you? Amen. You want to know when it's time to talk to God? Every day. Amen. And all times. Every day. Yes. Keep a relationship strong between you and the Lord. Amen. Keep praying. I remember 9 11 happened. President declared a national day of prayer, and Friday was the national day of prayer, and people wanted to go, oh, we've got to go to church Friday. President said it, we've got to go to church Friday. Why don't we go to church every day? Why do we need to wait for a tragedy to happen before people start crying out to God? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. You know, my babies don't go to bed without they praying with dad. He said, why in the world would you do a thing like that? Because they look at my life, they look at my walk, and it affects theirs. We were sitting there the other night, and I was listening to them. How? And by the way, don't y'all look strange? Because y'all do the same thing. One was getting on to the other, and they were using scripture. Well, you're like that person on the Bible. I'm listening to it go back and forth. And it's a pretty good little conversation. So I'm to be at, huh? You gotta see who dropped their head in that conversation. Right there. <laughs> I said, just be careful, don't twist scripture to fit your agenda. Amen. Amen. Right, Kat? Hey, you say amen right there, son. Amen. God's good, isn't he? Following, looking, seeing, an example. Read on. He says, for many walk of whom I've told you often, and now they're even weeping that they're the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Look at their walk. Look at how they're doing. Hey, those things are contrary to the things of God. He's warning about that. <clears throat> who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to to the working whereby he is able even to do all things unto himself. He says they walk contrary to the things of God. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is it that we're imitating when we walk? Who are we patterning our walk after? I used to watch the Jeffersons. <laughs> I was a kid, all right? And there ain't nobody had a walk like George Jefferson. <laughs> huh? Y'all remember? Sure enough. 
sling them hands up in the air and he'd get strutting out through there. Oh, George Jefferson and Wheezy. What a walk! It's the kind of walk that you remember. What would somebody say about your walk? Hmm? Is there a purpose for how you walk and what you do? Galatians chapter number six. Go over with me. Verse 15 says, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. So whether you want to say I'm a Republican or whether you want to say I'm a Democrat, hey, none of that stuff matters to the other beings. But a new creature. You always got both sides of it. I'm this or I'm that. I'm a northerner. I'm a southerner. Back and forth, back and forth. How we ride these little hobby horses we got. None of that matters to the other beings. But a new creature. <coughs> You know what I am? I'm a Christian. Amen. I'm a born again believer. Amen. And as many as walk according to this rule, well, we're the Scots. What's that have to do with eggs in Alaska? <laughs> and by the way, they're high priced. Yeah. I heard somebody the other day dropped one on the floor and they had to get the insurance adjuster out to see how much money they were going to make back on the Y'all laugh. But at ten dollars a pop. Y'all listening? The fact of the matter is, and as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy on, upon the Israel of God. From henceforth let us no more trouble me. Let henceforth let no man trouble me. For I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, with your spirit. Amen. What Paul's saying here is, I'm not about this guy over here, and I'm not about that guy over there. I'm about Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. What's your purpose for walking? What's your rule that you follow after? What means so much to you? Do you realize that in our lives we need to have certain characteristics, or should I say, we all have to have certain morals about us that we operate a certain way. Amen. Not giving over to. You know, I sit and watched a little bit of that basketball game there yesterday as it's going back and forth, and I seen some of the message boards where Texas is saying, oh, Texas is bigger and better and greater, and then people come back from Tennessee and say, there wouldn't be a Texas without Tennessee. <laughs> Back and forth, back and forth. Y'all know the history. Uh, it's funny to watch, but how foolish and ridiculous we are and how we carry on in our lives. There ought to be a higher purpose and a bigger meaning of why we do what we do and who we really are. Yes. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them. Do you walk according to the things of God, what God's purpose and put in your life to do? Or do you seek after the things of man? Makes a difference. You've heard me say before, you may be the only Bible that people read. Make sure they're reading the right one. Amen. How you walk, how you conduct and carry yourself, it makes a big difference. So what do you mean, preacher? Circumspectly. Circumspectly. Now what does that mean, circumspectly? Careful to consider all circumstances. Count the cost. Weigh things out. Do things with reason and with purpose. Don't just carelessly or flippantly go about anything. Do everything with a purpose. Circumspectly. Consider all circumstances and possible consequences. Now here's the deal. God's given me liberty. And thank God, Brother William, I got the liberty, but here's the deal. With liberty comes responsibility and how I conduct and carry myself affects those around me. If I know 
that what I do, Brother John, will harm those that are around me, I need to watch what I'm doing. Say amen right there. Why? Because even though I might be able to do certain things, maybe what I'm doing might be hurting those around me. Paul says he's not going to put a stumbling block in front of his weaker brother. You know why? Because he cares for them. And he don't want them to fall. Remember that walk and you get up, boy, and you, you, you get going now in the morning. Oh, they're, they're not quite stable yet. And you throw something out in front of them, right down they'll go. Huh? It's important to watch that. It's important to consider that. Walk circumspectly, he says. The Bible says in, uh, in, in Ephesians 5, verse number 15, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Examine why you're at in the circumstance and the situation that you're at. Let me ask you this question. The other morning, Thursday was the craziest day I ever had going to Nashville. If you knew anything, you've been listening to anything, I'm telling you, they shut I-24 down both ways. So I'm from the area. I know there's some back roads. So we're going to jump over on 41. And we did. There's two wrecks on 41. And that's shut down. I get up there finally, Brother Alex, I can hit Gum Road. So I hit Gum Road. I ain't the only one. Someone like other people might have known, but in Gum Road is narrow. Y'all know I drive a big truck. It's called a dually. And I meet another big truck on Gum Road. I'm in the ditch, he's in the ditch, and we barely get by each other. Get on up there, and finally I work my way back around to get ahead of where they had shut the interstate down and back on the interstate we go, because I gotta get Aunt Jean to the airport. They don't wait at the airport. And lo and behold, out in front of us are another three or four accidents. Oh, Lord, why? We're going to jump off on exit 64 and go around. Can't do that now. There's two wrecks on that road. All right, 62. We're going to get off exit. No, can't do that either. Well, I was going to go up to Harding Place because that's really where I always go over and catch Donaldson Pike. Then I know, y'all you know how that is. But you can't because there's a wreck there. By the time we get past 62, I guess it was, they done cleared it up and everything, and now we can go hard in place. Whew, thank you, Lord. So I get Aunt Jenny there 12 minutes before takeoff. You got to be there 10 minutes before takeoff clocked in for them to let you on the plane. We're out on the curve. They said, no, no way. So they bumped my aunt to 1 o'clock. So we leave Aunt Jenny at the airport, and Jenny finally gets home about 9, 10 o'clock at night. Because the day just continued, she gets all the way to Galveston, and there was a mess up there at Galveston, and then they finally get her to San Diego, and they had to take a new loops around the airport because the wind is blowing. Ah! Huh? Come on. Beat our dash. Say things we ought not be saying. And we know that all things work together for good to them who are the call according to his purpose. Do we not know this? Do we not understand that God's in control? There's a reason and a purpose in all things. How do we walk? He says circumspectly. There needs to be more to us than just philippically going through the day. Everything needs to be with purpose. Understanding there's a bigger hand at play that's guiding and directing things that we cannot see and we do not understand. And along our journey, these things happen. They test us, they prove us, they reveal. The more and more we go through these things, it really proves our walk. Verse number one, look at it with me. 
And he entered into a ship and, a, and passed over and came into his own city. There is nobody that knows your walk better than the people around you. You can fool those that don't know you. It's like the three preachers I heard that when they got out of town, they were down at some place, and one of them said, Whoo! He says, You know, I like to be out of town from time to time because people down here, they don't know me. He said, I like to do a little drinking. <laughs> and so when I'm out of town, I get to be a shot of alcohol. You know, this is wild. Now, as they were telling off on himself, he said, I like to. Do a little smoking. He said, I'm going to fire me one up. Both of them looked at the third one and said, hey, come on, buddy. It's time to tell. We're all telling off. Come on. It's time to tell. He said, well, now we're telling me. He said, I like to do some talking. And I can't wait to get back home and tell everybody how you already are. Ain't nobody knows you like those that are around you. They see your walk. The Bible says he was back in his own place amongst his own people. John 4, go there with me. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman, which testified, he told me all that ever I did. Now let's look back at her history. You do understand she'd been with some guys. Matter of fact, as they were talking about how many times she'd been married, they brought up she's got five husbands and the one she's with right now, she's shacking with. Okay? So in our society, we need to look at her and say, hey, there's some things here with this woman that's probably not right. And Oh, mercy, she's not the best representation of the community. But she ain't hiding from it. She's not holding back from it, no. She says, hey, come meet the man that told me all that I ever I did. And he knows all about me. And he still loves me. He still cares for me. He saved me because of it. And the woman which testified told me, uh, 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 and the one which testified told me all that ever I did. And, and, and when the Samaritans were come unto him, they were sought. Him that he would tarry with them, and he rode about two, uh, there two days. Many more believed because of his own word. And said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of the same, for, uh, of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that he that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. So what is he saying? Hey, we've learned, we've listened, we're singing, taking our own selves that what he's saying is true. After two days, he departed hence and went into Galilee. And for Jesus himself testified that a prophet hath no honor in his own country. I started to ponder that, Tom, and wonder why the word is that, that a man is uh, with that honor in his own country. It's because that people watch us from the time we're little and see our walk and they see how we've messed up, how we've done things wrong. And they get it in their head. They can't ever be any more than what they are. The truth of the matter is, we can be. I thank God I'm not what I once was. <laughs> Running the roads, howling at the moon, doing the things that the world does. I'm glad I'm not that guy anymore. I'm glad that God redeemed me and he separated me from all that stuff. And because of that, he changed my walk. Amen. Think about that. Amen. Don't hold over somebody's head what they used to be. Right. We all used to be something ungodly. The Bible says in Romans 3, 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. Thank God that God saves sinners. And because of that, He changes us. You remember the man in Kedera? You remember that guy who was amongst the dead? Who was infested with demons? What happened to him? He got saved. And when he saw him, he was clothed and in his right mind. Wow! Changed him. Not the same preacher anymore. Not the same person anymore. Aren't you glad God saves sinners? Amen. Mark chapter 6, verse number 1. 
And he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogues, and many hearing were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? What wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hand? Is not this the carpenter's son? What are we listening to here? Man, don't you remember when he was a little boy down there? Doing the things that he was doing? The man's with that honor in his own country. It's almost as if, Brother John, they think you can never progress beyond who and what you are. I remember as a boy... Going to school, my mother worked so that we would not have to have school lunches. We were rich. But my mama said she wanted to make sure that she always paid for us. She did. Now, I'm not trying to shame you, but don't misunderstand me. But we didn't have extras. <clears throat> Y'all remember when you used to have to, you had an extra quarter, you could buy you an ice cream? That was a rare occurrence. Some kids got to have an ice cream every day. Remember those push-ups? Hmm? Maybe an extra milk. You know how I got my extra milk? I used to take out the trash for the, for the lunch ladies. It's all right. I'm not ashamed of it. That's right. That's right. I'm not ashamed of it. I could go back to school right now and I could buy ice cream and milk every day and as much as I want. But I'm here to tell you, I don't think of it that way. I'm thankful for where God's brought me through yes. and where I'm at today. Y'all listen. You see, I'm not what I once was. It's took time to get here. How many of y'all remember scraping and getting by? How many of y'all remember those hardships and those heartaches? How many of y'all have ever had a hard time with an electric bill? Amen. Amen. Hmm? That first year of marriage. <laughs> told Amy, I said, those dogs in the neighborhood looking awful tasty. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't have meat. We didn't have the money to afford that. Huh? Y'all yeah. yeah. with me? Yeah. Somebody comes to the house and says, hey, I killed this deer. Do you want it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Before they ever finish talking, we, where do you want me to go pick it up? Amen. Huh? You know what that does? Makes you appreciate where you're at. That's right. Amen. It's an amazing thing how people think that you can't progress from where you started. But because of God, I'm where I'm at today. Amen. So he went back home and he's amongst his kin. Verse 2. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, laying on a bed, and Jesus, seeing their face, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. So he's back home, and the phone starts to ring. Now, don't y'all look at me strange. I know this is before Bell South. I get it. <laughs> but I got news for you. I heard a long, long time ago, you tell this or tell that or tell, and I ain't going to say the other part, because you're going to say, oh, mercy. But y'all know what he was saying. Yeah. Word gets out. Yeah. And the word got out that Jesus was there, and all of a sudden they start coming to him with their problems. Amen? That's what he's saying. And they're all coming down, they're bringing the sick of the palsy, they're, they're, they're bringing these, uh, these people that are, that are ill and all this, and, and word gets out. Jesus don't shy away from it because it's an opportunity. Mark chapter 2, verse number 1, and again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door. It's packed. They're, they're everywhere. And by the way, if you look around, you'll 
see opportunities everywhere in your life too. Yes, Amen. Why did God save you? Why did God give you what you had? Get you on those feet to walk a certain way, to instruct you how you step day in and day out. Why does God say a thing like that? So that you'll have an impact on those that you come in contact with. Amen. Remember the deal about your neighbor? You say, well, who's my neighbor? Everybody that you happen to find. Amen. He's in Capernaum and they're noisy throughout and, and they're there not even about the door. The Bible says and they, they come unto him bringing one sick of the palsy which were born of four. When he could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was and when they had broken it up they let the, uh, let the bed there uh, when they let down the bed there where he the sick of the palsy he was and when he had, uh, had broken it up they let down the bed where any of the sick of the palsy lay. So here they are. They got into Jesus, and that was an opportunity for Jesus to do a work on his life. Why? First Peter chapter three. I got saved in nineteen hundred and eighty-four. After I got saved, my daddy said to me, Shane, find out what you believe and why you believe what you believe and nail it down. The following year, I began to research and study why I am what I am. Not going off of what my dad says, going off of the Word of God. Within that year, Jack, not only did I find out what I believe and why I believe what I believe, but I began to study how to lead other people to the Word also. I sit down and I begin to memorize the Romans road. In case you ain't figured it out, we got tracks out there that has the Romans road on it. Amen. Step by step. <laughs> and over my years and my time, God has given me opportunities to win people to Christ. Matter of fact, last Sunday we celebrated a young man. Had a good seat, my brother. My brother. Amen. Amen. But the reason I was able to help him because where God helped me in my own walk. Hmm? What he's doing is he's preparing us to be a witness, Brother David, to those we come in contact with. You hear all the chatter they're talking about? Talking about wars and rumors of wars. What are you talking about? They're hearing it too. Hear how they're talking about grocery stores and shelves being empty? They're hearing it too. What begins to happen, Danny, is they begin to have questions. I guess my question to you today is do you have any answers? 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? <coughs> now in order for it to get to that place, Brother Jeff, you've got a purpose in your heart that you're going to follow God. And if you do that, following what's good, what can they do to you? And I'll help you out with that one. Nothing. Right. <laughs> Elisha is in the house. The army comes up, uh, up against him. Right. Elisha goes to the Lord in prayer. And blindness happens to the army. Yeah. Elisha walks out and says, Whom are you seeking? They tell him. He says, Well, follow me and I will show you him. He's right there, but it's not time to open their eyes. So he watched, he marches them right into the camp of the enemy. And the king of Israel says, hey, should we kill him? No, 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 no. Just watch what God's doing here. Now I know sometimes we often thought, boy, if I could, I would burn their hides. 
But maybe that's not what God wants. Hmm? Maybe God's about redemption. Maybe God's about restitution. Maybe he's about turning situations and circumstances around. There's a lot of things out there that's wrong. But I also learned from the scriptures that God is long-suffering to bless word, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. God wants people saved. Amen. You say, well, how in the world does that figure into my life? Thank you for asking. Look on. For the eyes of the Lord are over, he, uh, over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you? If ye be followers of that which is good. But, and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye. Be not afraid of their terrors, neither be troubled. But sanctify, set God, the Lord Jesus Christ, a, a, set him apart in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Not only answer them, but how you answer them. Amen. How you deal with those people makes a big difference. You come to my office and you tell me, Preacher, I've been doing this, and Preacher, I've been doing that. I'm not there to condemn you. I'm not there to put you down. I'm not there to cast you out. No, I'm there looking for restitution to try to revive you and see if God can do the work within you. Amen. It's an amazing thing watching a sinner come to Christ. Changes everything. Yeah. Look. Except for the grace of God, there go why? We need to keep that before our, our, our eyes at all times. Why? Because there's those people out there that need to hear the message. Amen. And how are they going to hear it? In your walk. In your walk. But sanctify the word God in your hearts. Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you the reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. You know what that means? That means, Crystal, they're going to come knocking on your, on your door and say, how are you doing it? Because they're watching you. They're watching you. And Brother Glenn, when they come knocking, you got to have the answer. Be ready. But how can you do that? With your walk. One thing I learned along my journey, they're not going to ask you sitting in the bar, they're not going to ask you going after the same things that they're going after. Because they look at their they look at your life and they don't see any different from the, their life and your life, and therefore they don't think that you got any answers. But if you start walking for the Lord, you start walking and doing the things that God wants you to do, I promise you they'll come knocking. They'll ask you the hope that is in you. That's Bible right there. But how do they know that? They're watching your walk. I start to think about how God gives us opportunities along our journey. For the sake of time, you can write Matthew 25, verse 34 through 36 down. I'll give you just a little tidbit of that. He said, I was a stranger, and you took me... Uh, I was a stranger and you took me not in. I was naked and you clothed me not. You know, there's opportunities that a lot of people let slip. But what you do opens new doors for doing more for God. The more I serve him, the more he gives me more opportunities. For instance, when somebody's thirsty and I give them a cool drink of water, they get down the road they're going to say, hey, they'll get you some water up there. And you know what happens, Miss Linda? More people come looking for water. Yes. Sure do. Amen. I just got to be ready with the cup yes. when they get there. Amen. Hmm? And the more that you do, the more that you put yourself out there, hey, it's what God uses and utilizes. Why? Because he's not willing that any should perish, but all should come repentance. It's a beautiful and amazing thing that when God's people use and utilize the opportunities that God gives them, it affects those around them that grows. Yes. Let me give it to you like this as we get ready to close this morning. John 3, 16. God so loves me. You know what that did? That affected my life. I started walking differently. I started talking differently. Because of what God did in me and 
with me and through me. And now that I have that, I share that with those I come in contact with. Adam, I don't mean to pick on you again this morning, but it's our little brothers. You want to know how serious that is between him and I? You mess with him and you'll see. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I grew up. You don't mess with my brothers. <laughs> Sound about right, Buck? Amen? Just the way it was, huh? Now, I can mess with my brothers all day long, but you better not mess with them. Amen. It's my right to mess with my brothers. I got four of them, and I mess with them. Amen? I have fun messing with my brothers. Don't you lay a hand on them. Amen? Isn't that the way it was at your house? You see, Adam means something to me. Now because what God's given to me and I shared it with him and now that he has it, I'm looking at his walk and I did, I watched you this week. He's sharing things like what God's doing and how God can touch people's lives. He's putting those Bible verses on Facebook and things like that. <laughs> you know you've been watched. And I'm sitting back and I'm bubbling over because I'm saying, praise God, what God's doing. And now how his walk is affecting those that are around him. Amen. You understand how it works? Amen. Yeah. See, it's not by chance when Jesus went back home, it began to be noised. Now, why do you think they brought the sick of the palsy to Jesus? Because they had heard that Jesus healed people. They had heard that Jesus touched people's lives and they were changed. They would heard that Jesus cared for people. Now I got news for you. You're not going to do that with people that don't give a rip. You're going to do that with people that really do care. Huh? <clears throat> what do people know about you? What do people think about you as these things begin to get worse and worse, Brother Tim? Who are they going to come looking for and seeking out for answers? Those that are walking the right way. Amen. They knew where they could get the help because Jesus had walked differently than others. And because of his walk, it made such an impact that people came from all over. And the more that we walk the right way, Sue, the more our life will make an impact to all those that come in contact with us. So let's recap. From the very first time I started taking my steps, there was a lot of uncertainty, a lot of things that I didn't really know, and I was kind of a little wobbly here and wobbly there. But over time, God strengthened that to where now I'm walking not just more solid and more determined, amen. I have a purpose and a reason, and now I'm using and utilizing my walk for all those I come in contact with. Amen. And I'm making an impact more so now than ever. Why? Because of my walk. And when we get this down pat, we understand, just like it did with the sick of the palsy right here, it wowed those that saw it, it will make an impact on those we come in contact with and they say, wow, now we know where it's at. Amen. So it makes a difference how you walk. How you walk. Remember, you can either be a light and a word of encouragement or you can be just like everybody else leading people astray. But that choice is up to you. How you walk makes a big difference. I myself, I'd rather make the impact that brings glory and honor to the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we bow before you, as we come to the throne, thank you for the opportunity. I pray, Lord, you speak to the hearts here this morning. Thank you for walking before me, showing me how I should walk before all these. Lord, your word has been declared. Now, Lord, please bring us to our knees in Christ's name. Amen. All stand with page book, John. Two hundred eighty. Gus, what are you come? Come on, come on, right now. Come on, come on.
God for those that walked before me. Amen. Those that walked before me. See, I didn't start this thing out. Right. Mm -mm. I had a lot of help. I had a lot of help. And because I watched them and I studied them and observed them, it helped me better to form my walk, my steps, the things that I do. Now that I know that people watch me and how my walk affects their lives, it means I'm a little bit more precise in where I step and what I do. I'm telling you, your walk has an impact more so than what you realize. <coughs> Those that are around you day in and day out, they know. Here Jesus goes back home and the first thing happens, they flood him with people that have needs. That's what happened. And before you knew it, there were so many people that even the sick of the boss couldn't even get in there. And what had to happen? That had to rip the roof out. Because they weren't going to be denied. And Jesus looked out there and saw those four that brought him to Jesus and said, your faith. Not his faith. Their faith is what had the impact on this young man. You impact people more than what you might realize. Just make sure you're walking the right way. People are watching. They're studying. Just do it the right way. And I promise you, we'll all rejoice when all said and done come glory time. Amen. But until then, keep eye stepping. Walk the way God has you. And I promise you, it'll make the difference. Brother Ted dismisses in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the beautiful message that you sent forward to us. Pray that we take what you have heard here this day. Spiritual elders out there, there's so many in need. Dear Lord, we ask Stephen to watch out all these prayer requests. All these beautiful people you blessed our company with. We ask all these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.